Welcome to the Insomnia Project, the holiday episodes. These shows tend to be a little more peppier. So, you know, although I did speak to someone who said I only got through half your episode talking about stockings, so, and then they fell asleep. So they're peppy, but, you know, not with super pep in it, shall we say. Whatever holiday you're um, celebrating, we hope it's a safe and healthy one. And thank you for joining us on the Insomnia Project today. I am delighted, thrilled, and just tickled to have my next guest, a dear friend of mine who I was in a show with, who is funny, brilliant, and just a joy to be around. Welcome, Leslie Seiler, to the Insomnia Project. Oh, Marco, hello. Thank you for having me and for that lovely intro. Oh, my goodness. You know what? You only get the intro you deserve on this podcast. (laughs) So if you're lovely, you're going to get a lovely intro. Oh, my God, I Um, love it. Now, Leslie, I'm thrilled because I haven't seen or spoken to you in a while. You're um, talking to us from Los Angeles. I am, yes. Sunny but LA. Mm-hmm. You are also the one person I know who loves Christmas more than anyone else. I do. I do love it. It is my time. I, mm-hmm. the, the entire autumn leading all the way up to Christmas is my season because it starts with Thanksgiving and it just goes. Then we're on a train right. of like celebration, occasion, cooking, movies, themes, games, and, and it all culminates at Christmas. You know what I mean? I hear you. How mm-hmm. does it unfold for you, Leslie? Like when does when does the Christmas spirit start? It, does it happen December 1st? And what is your process? <laughs> this is a great question. Um, it definitely starts before December 1st, which I know okay. may annoy some people, but hey, you do you, everybody. So I hold <laughs> on until Halloween because okay. I also like Halloween. So And my husband really loves Halloween. So we'll still celebrate Halloween fully, decorate, all that stuff. November 1st, I start to itch a little bit. I just start to go like, you know, can we bring out one decoration? But we wait until Remembrance Day. And oh, we, that's so great. Yeah. So we just wait, we hold on. And then normally, you know, we have that day. And then November 12th, all heck breaks loose in this house. You know what I mean? We bring out the tree. We bring out the lights. We start bringing things out, um, kitchen towels. It all starts to kind of um, come. And that might take about a week to get everything brought out. You know what I mean? Um, Fantastic. And, and then, yeah. Oh, it's great. And then- I, and should, yeah. I should mention, sorry, uh, Leslie, before you go for it, I'm just going to mention to our American listeners who might be saying, what's Remembrance Day? In oh. Canada, we celebrate Remembrance Day on November 11th, the 11th day at the 11th hour on the 11th month. And that is a day that we honor our veterans and remember all our fallen soldiers from World War One and all wars after then. So- uh, I should have said this too, because in America, it is Veterans Day. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. But, but I'm sorry I cut you off there. No. Uh, Leslie, please continue. Where were we? It was after Remembrance Day and you're you're starting to unfold your oh, Christmas. Yes. yes. And so like I say, the decorating and all of that sort of bringing everything out takes about a good week, right? Then also, I have a lot of Christmas clothing. So there's oh. uh, so t-shirts. Like I, can, I probably have a, a two-week rotation where I don't have to wear the same Christmas t-shirt two days in a row. So that just... That's great. But what that means is I have to empty a whole drawer. So I I take all the sh- Christmas shirts out of storage and I take, you know, whatever, empty one t- drawer in my dresser and that gets filled with all the Christmas clothes. Right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got to be ready. And yes. I mean, like, and you want them handy. You don't want to have to sort through, uh, like, you know, if you're wearing them every day, you want them at an arm's length and ready to go. Oh, absolutely. I can't be digging into a cupboard or, you know, into the top of the closet, you know, behind a box or something trying to find no. you know, my my festival of shirts. I got to be ready to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> but here, fun thing, I, I sort of don't start wearing the festive shirts until uh, until December 1st. So even though okay. we're prepping, that's kind of just to give you that timeline. But sure. an interesting thing, Marco, has happened since I've moved to the United States, which is, of course, there's American Thanksgiving, which oh, is- Yes. Right? Which is really oh. the kick off to Christmas in this country. So- We've really started to embrace that. So on American Thanksgiving, okay. we're normally at, you know, my friend's place or we do a dinner or what, of course, this year, um, uh, we had just a four person dinner. It was fabulous. Um, we hung out, we watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, and yeah, we just had the best time and started. So we started to talk about Christmas. We put up a couple of decorations. Um, okay. my husband PK and my friend's uh, boyfriend Spencer spent basically all of Thanksgiving while my friend and I were cooking putting up the outdoor Christmas lights and the decorations. Amazing. And it, yeah, it, so that really kicked it off this year in a different way. 
Yeah. So, Leslie, let me ask you this. So, hmm. you moved to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Did you leave Christmas stuff behind and have to start anew in some areas, or did it all come with you? Oh, this is – I see, again, you're really digging to the hard-hitting questions, which I like oh, a yeah. lot. Um, <laughs> so, at first, we barely brought anything because, you know, when we did move, it was like I think we had eight boxes and, you know, four suitcases, and that was kind of it. I came home to Toronto in um, November. So, we moved in January. The following November, I came back and went into our storage unit and brought two huge suitcases of stuff back. Okay, <laughs> so okay. So that was a lot. And previous to that, because I have another Christmas tradition that I've been doing since 2013, which is coming down and with my my, my best friend, uh, uh, Lauren Ash, um, going to Disneyland together at Christmas oh my time goodness. specifically. So I would always come like around, you know, anywhere in December or even the end of November. Um, and we would go for like a couple of days, even when I was still living in Toronto. So- my point is, before I moved down here, I was bringing suitcases of stuff and leaving it as well. So I was kind of bringing a lot of Christmas stuff even before we moved and leaving it at her I house, see. basically. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, because you're also a Disneyophile too. Oh yes, but we're I'm- not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna tiptoe into that. We'll save it for the new year when you and I record another episode on Leslie's fa- favorite things. How about I we love do it. an episode? Like, okay, okay, but okay. So. Leslie, I'm going to just jump around because I'm really excited to share something with you. Can, can, we, we, what, what, what? can we talk wrapping? Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Okay. So I need to know your process and uh-huh. what kind of paper you have and how you approach a gift. And then I got to tell you something that I've done this year and see if it if it meets with Leslie Seiler's, um, you know, green thumb of approval or whatever, or, or ornament thumb of approval. So I just yeah. need to, I just need to know what you think of what I've come up with. So please go. Okay. This is great because I was just going to say, I can't wait to find out what your process is because I, I have a feeling you're a good rapper anyway. So what I, what I do, um, I buy big, big rolls of paper. Um, so Love for it. example, this year we're, st- we're still using paper that we bought last year. Like I'm talking like, I'd have to look at the footage, but like, it's a lot. And I buy them in the big, big rolls. And I, I like to have at least four or five different patterns because, um, I like to like all of PK's gifts, my husband's gift yes. get wrapped in the same paper. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're having Christmas with other people, um, which we are this year, uh, with my, uh, um, again, same, same friend, same friend, <laughs> Lauren Ash and right. her boyfriend, we're all come getting together. And, um, so everybody's gifts will be in the same paper, which I really like. And I got to say this. First oh, yeah. of all, oh. PK and Lauren Ash are also friends of mine, and they are also not just a delight, but the most wonderful people you would ever have a <laughs> dinner with, a Christmas with, uh, even a coffee with. I don't know about Lauren Ash's boyfriend, but I can only speak to the two that I know, and they are golden, and they themselves are a Christmas gift, a walking Christmas gift as far oh. as I'm concerned. Oh, the, oh, Marco, you couldn't have put it better. You're absolutely right, especially because PK, I think, almost loves Christmas as much as me, which people say to me all the time, they're like, you really married the right man. Man. And I'm like, I, know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, oh, we'll have to get yeah. we'll have to get him on an episode then uh, oh, if yeah. he's if he's available. I know he's busy. Maybe <laughs> I'll, I can uh, book a time and have a Christmas episode with PK. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so back and to you wrapping. And I have embraced a lot together, but yes. But back okay. to your wrapping question. So, so that that's my one thing. So big rolls of paper, um, so that gifts can match in different patterns. But then people all. Certain people's gifts, they all match. Then um, I also like to, I don't like to be stressed when I'm wrapping. So I'll try to wrap as they come in. You know what I mean? So I'm not spending Christmas Eve wrapping because then you're missing Christmas Eve, right? Sure. Yeah, that's my thought there. The only thing that I do less of that I used to do, I used to do more ribbons and bows. But again, these days, since we've wrapped everything here, then we're going over to to Lauren's house on Monday. And then the bows and the ribbons get all crushed and whatever in transport. So bows and ribbons don't don't hold up to um, travel as well as other things. I like to. What I'm finding is, I like to get a nice tag. Mm-hmm. If you get a nice tag, they're generally flat, and they can take a little bit more, um, you know, cajoling than a bow or a ribbon. So I try to get a really stunning tag, and oh, then that yes. becomes the feature on the gift. Marco, that is a great point. Also, Leslie, I don't know if your big rolls are double-sided, but 
for me, that's this is a game changer. Oh. I love a double sided roll. Uh, roll, roll, sorry. Now, Marco, yeah. how long have you known about the double sided rolls? Okay, so let's see. I don't know if you know this about me, but you love Christmas as much as I love Costco. So for me, Costco, <laughs> wow. I, I discovered that there where they have these ginormous rolls that will last you at least three Christmases, depending oh. on how much and and how big you're wrapping, and they give you two sides, right? So I have I have one that is a purple paper with snowmen on it. And yeah. the flip side is kind of, you know, like an advent calendar that has like the days of December and in each little square, there's a different, there's Santa on a sled. There's a reindeer shaking hands with a penguin. There's <laughs> a wreath. There's like, there's all these little images in the different December dates all scattered around them in little square. So that's on the back of my purple, purple paper. I've got these like uh, various colored December uh, vignettes. Oh my and God. then because this year I felt like I needed more, I just needed, because, you know, like you, Leslie, like I need a variety in my wrapping because otherwise yeah. I just feel like I need more, like under the tree, it just needs to have yeah. a certain look. And I love white paper with a green tree on it. So the background mm -hmm. is white. The mm -hmm. tree is green. It's something I've loved for a long time. I think I mentioned it in an early episode. Mm -hmm. Um of the holiday episodes. And on the back of that, you'll appreciate this. It's a red tartan. Like it's just a oh. red, you know, um, yes. tartan. And I just love it. And I say you'll appreciate it because you're originally from Nova Scotia. And um, That's right. anyways, it, it's just, it's just wonderful. I love the double side. Um, the double side is P PK again, back to him. He's, he's in everything here. Um, mm -hmm. Bought a beautiful roll of double sided um, this it. year. And, and it is, it's game changer. It's so thick and wonderful. And then for, again, for someone like everything you're saying, the fact that you're, it's the purple on one side and then so different on the other side. I mean, that would help me. And again, everybody gets, you know, they're different. I, I only need one roll for, for two people. You know what I mean? For two right. different sets of gifts. Um, oh, and the tartan is just so classic, Marco. It's so like classy and yeah. pretty and yeah, yeah. Oh, it sounds nice. Okay. So Leslie, I'm excited mm -hmm. to tell you this. <laughs> okay. But before I do, do you ever get, you know, sometimes when you, you have more paper than you, you thought you needed. And then when you make that fold, the triangle fold, you've got too much triangle on the top. And yes, so it's yes. hard to, the, so I just snip that triangle. Do you have a better method than just the, the triangle snip? <gasps> Well, I will try to fold it down so I don't mind okay. if it's like a triangle and then like a plateau top. Do you know what I mean? I see. Yep. Yeah. I got so it. I'll, yeah. I'll do that rather than because, again, I feel like when I cut, sometimes I have either jaggedy edges or it's kind of like right. open. And it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really try to I, do that clean edge. Yeah. For me, one of the secrets is don't be stingy with tape. Especially if your packages have to travel, you want to tape it down with good tape. Don't get that really inexpensive dollar store tape because I find it doesn't hold up. And sometimes I'll even use packing tape. If my package has to travel <laughs> and it's heavy, I'll just use a lot of strong tape and the person who has to open it, good luck to them. Well, absolutely. This is the thing. And again, I don't think tape is where we need to be saving. You know what I mean? Right. So right. I agree. And I agree that that packing tape, um, yeah, because I'm mailing packages and again, uh, envelopes, I don't even mess around. They get right. taped. I don't need anything opening up in the mail, popping mm -hmm. open, you know, Perfect. crossing the border. I need it all nice and secure. So for sure. Uh, oh, okay. So Leslie, now I'm going to tell you something oh, that God. I want to say I invented and it's called Frankenstein wrapping. This is the term that I'm bringing to this style of wrapping that I've done. Okay. So we got shipped a big box from our family in Nova Scotia. So my sister-in-law and brother-in-law live in Nova Scotia and they sent us a rather large box. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I don't think they mailed it. I think they ordered it online and this large box came. So I don't want to just put a, a dingy box under the tree. And at the same time, I don't want to use all that paper to wrap the giant box. Right. So this is what I came up with. As I'm wrapping other gifts, I'm taking all the odd ends and snippets and whatnot, mm -hmm. and I'm taping it on that box. So it's multicolored and just every little square inch with all the cutoffs, I am uh, covering that box. So it has this sort of raggedy end, Frankenstein, <laughs> many different colors, many different sizes. 
mm-hmm. of uh, square footage is covered with cutoffs of the wrapping. And I'm calling that Frankenstein wrapping. And it looks kind of neat. I'll send you a picture. Oh, I want to see this. I think you need to, yes, I, I say yes to this idea. I love it. And okay. I hope it catches on. Because yes, because normally I keep all those little paper scraps. Okay, right. And I will... Um, use them to wrap stocking stuffers. Because let me tell you, I wrap everything that goes into a stocking. (laughs) This is really controversial because my wife grew up not wrapping her stocking stuffers Mm -hmm. and I grew up wrapping the stocking (gasps) stuffers. So in our stocking stocking episode, which aired a few days ago, we got into a little bit of a debate because I'm like, I believe anything that is to be unwrapped or anything that is a gift for Christmas, you wrap it. And she's like, not in the stockings. And I was like, I disagree. And so I'm glad to hear that you're a stocking wrapper as well. Definitely a stocking wrapper. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but you're right. There are people on both sides of that debate that I can see how that could get yeah. a little bit uh, heated. Okay. Sure. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to move from wrapping yes. to ornaments. I imagine you have ornaments on your tree. Mm-hmm. I definitely do have um, many ornaments. Yes. <laughs> I want to know your favorite uh-huh. and I want to know, do you have themed ornaments and what is your approach to the tree with ornaments? Do you, do you tend to stay towards the end of the branches in go really deep inside a mm-hmm. mixture of both? Tell us your approach, uh, Leslie, and what recommendations you would make when, when putting ornaments on a tree. Okay. Well, for sure. Um, so my approach is definitely that PK again does the lights and lots of lights and he will go sort of from in to out. So they aren't just on the edge of the branches. Like that tree is really, really well lit. I think our- And lights tree, before ornaments, right? Before, yes, absolutely before. Okay, I think great. we have six strings of lights on a little like- wow. I think we have a six, seven foot tree, something like that. So, okay. so there's that. So then ornament wise, we take our time. We always put on a movie or something. There might be some rum and nog going and of we, um, and we just sort of start to go and it depends. I definitely do some depth. So I'll have, I have like some bigger ornaments that are almost made to like sit on branches or sort right. of need more space. Like if it's like a bird nest or um, I have a couple of Elvis ones actually, where they're Love like it. really big. They were like from the Hallmark collection, um, but they're a very girthy kind of ornament. And they're like, it's almost like a figure, like not a ball. Right. So it's like a it's it. like Elvis dancing or something, but he kind of needs to be like, so he'll go kind of like in a spot more in near the, um, Oh my God, the stem? The stem of the tree? That no, the right. trunk. Oh the trunk, God. the trunk, yeah. Because yeah. because he needs he needs um some strength, and you're gonna find that strength from the branch that's closest to the trunk, fair exactly. to say. Exactly. So his legs will almost like straddle a branch, and then you oh, know, the it. back of the ornament, whatever it is, kind of leans back. And um, but it's great because it does start to create I like that a lot, and I like how it starts to create a little more depth, right? I definitely sure. do a thing where I'll do smaller. I have some specific smaller ornaments that kind of go to the top and then obviously bigger kind of down. And it's not so separated that only small at the top, but like the, the top definitely will have some tinier ones. Um, you know, I won't put a really tiny ornament at the bottom, for example. Right. Um, a couple other fun traditions. You were just asking about um, yes. uh, uh, some of favorite ornaments. So we have sure. um, a little Millennium Falcon which is from Star Wars for anyone who doesn't know. Amazing. And a little mm-hmm. TIE fighter, which is the bad guy's ship from Star Wars. This is just so that everybody knows. Um, and every year, again, PK will do this. He puts it on the tree and um, he either makes one chase the other, but it changes year to year. So after he's done that, I have to go and find them and they're really tiny. So they're hard to find. And then you have to figure out who's chasing who is the Millennium Falcon chasing the TIE fighter Oh wow! or vice versa. Yes. Then of course, we also have the Christmas pickle. You know, I wrote it down. I wrote it down to ask you, please tell us more. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, yes, we have a Christmas pickle, which I do believe is a German originally tradition, but I know so many people who do it. Um, so also that. So then PK will hide the pickle on the tree as well. And um, whenever we have a Christmas party, people come over and we always invite them when we say, hey, can you find the pickle? Can you find the Millennium Falcon and the TIE fighter? They they know this. And- and I think the tradition too is the the child who finds the pickle first either gets to open their present or it gets to open a present first or gets an extra present. Oh. So if you, yeah, I think that's the tradition. It either it, either they get an extra present or they get to open the they are they're the first child that opens the present on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, depending. Um, if you don't have a 
pickle ornament for your tree. I strongly recommend it. Leslie, please continue. I'm sorry I keep interrupting you, but this no, is just fascinating for me. you're not interrupting. We are going okay. back and forth about very important things. Um, <laughs> Um, and then the other thing, because also a, a recommendation, this might be a no-brainer for people, but in particular, if you have an ornament that you really, really love, um, <clears throat> make sure it's securely on that tree so there's no chance it's going to fall or break. <laughs> you don't want any broken hearts at Christmas. And uh, um, we do have a fake uh, tree right now because you know we're in a building and sure. it's just more conducive to, to our situation right now, even though I love mm-hmm. to have a real one as well. Um, but so I will really put you know some of my prize ornaments and then make sure I bend the the branch back around. So it's almost like knotted. So there's no way right. that, uh, that ornament's coming loose. I also bend the, the hook, you know, oh, how, yes, um, yes. All, around the branch, especially if it's one of those, you know, those ones you've had in your family for years yeah. and they're glass or whatnot, because there's nothing more heartbreaking than a broken, broken ornament that you've loved. Well, can um, I tell you a, a one heartbreaking or ornament story, but it kind of has a what, positive ending. So I would love I, to hear it. When I did bring all of my stuff back from Toronto, that one that one trip that I brought the two big suitcases, somehow I – it was ridiculous. I, I think I was rushing and I did not properly pad two of my favorite ornaments, which again Oof. connects back to Disney. So every year when Ash and I would go, I always had – would pick up um, an ornament and they're like big kind of like Mickey heads and they have different ones every year and you, you can pick different ones. And I would always have joy and then the year written on it, like they'll, they'll – personalize them for you so okay. two of my joy ornaments are broken but Oof. so that was a tough one however it was 2013 and 2014 but i have all the pieces like i kept them because they were each in their own individual bag is the okay the other funny thing even though they got crushed they were in this bag in, in their individual packages so i am going to make some sort of art project like get a shadow box or something from michael's or do something because all the pieces are there and you can still sort of see the words and all of that but i i just don't ever want to throw those little i mean it, it's absolutely shattered there's no way to glue this thing back together but i'm just going to repurpose it and make something else make some christmas wall art can, may i share my idea with oh. what you can do with that yeah go yeah what do you got okay so leslie you can buy these ornaments that are clear glass right uh-huh. now if you have the opening of that clear glass ornament that's big enough perhaps yeah. you can take those shattered pieces or make them smaller and crush them and pour them into another ornament. And then on the face of that clear ornament that has um, the joy shards in it, write something like, you know, joy part two, or, you know, there's that, there's that saying, um, fall down five times, get up seven or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, there's beauty in everything, uh, the broken pieces and write one of those sayings oh on my- your new ornament. That way that ornament always gets put back on the tree. It goes back to where it belongs. Oh my God, Marco, that's brilliant yeah. and beautiful. And I like that we're yeah. even jumping to like the message could be different because of course I was like, oh, I would just put you know joy in the year again, but right. this is even better. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. All right. Has a happy end. Of course. And you know what, um, Leslie, I think what you've demonstrated here is the joy of ornaments are that like life, they're fragile and they Mm -hmm. need to be taken care of. But like human spirit, if they break, you just move forward. There's more ornaments to be had. I agree. Absolutely. Good point. All right, Leslie, tree toppers. This is where things get real. I know. I know. They do get real here because I was recently working on um, a a Christmas quiz for another event that I was doing. So I was doing Mm. a lot of research. I wanted to do some questions about tree toppers. And according to the internet, it's pretty passionate that there's only two choices, a star or an angel. Yeah. If you like, I was trying to look, I was like popular tree toppers or, or what have you, but all this information, I mean, some people do other things, but the internet is really like, it's this or this. (laughs) Where do you stand on that? Because you know, I've, I have oh, I have something to say about that. Oh, about the only two choices? Well, okay. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you quickly because I want to know what you think. Sure. Um, I like a star. I'm not against okay. an angel. I wouldn't make a, sure. a ruckus or a riot. But I, right. I think it's obviously – I say obviously because it's obvious to me because as a kid – my parents had this beautiful star tree topper, um, you know, like uh, I bought in the 70s um, and it would go on top of the tree and it um, it was sort of like a, 
a five, you know, a, a dimension or a three dimensional star. So it, it was almost like a hollow star that went out in all directions. And in the center of it, it had like a little sort of almost disc with all these little, you know, pretty spikes coming off of it that would spin and turn right. like the heat of the light would turn and spin the, the little star center. And it's so in my mind, iconic to me of Christmas. Um, and I just, I couldn't imagine putting anything other than a star on top of the tree. And I think it's just because where I came from. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think your family history has a lot to do with what goes on the top of the tree. Absolutely. And yeah. and ornaments and Christ, I mean Christmas altogether like right we we create some new traditions but I think they're really informed by you know what we grew up with or what our families might have done for sure. So 2 right. years ago uh, Amanda and I were dealing with the fact that we didn't have a tree topper that we loved. Mm -hmm. So I said, why don't we have a friendly competition where you source a tree topper that works for you. I'll source one that works for me. Mm -hmm. And then we'll present them on Christmas. And one of them gets on top of the tree. Oh my goodness. So she got this beautifully hand-blown Russian sort of glass topper that kind of looks like two balls and a spike on top. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like an ornament that's like round, round, and then tall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Or I'm picturing something what, that could be. Yeah. It's one of the shapes that of like, I think 1960s bulbs that they would put on the tree. That would be the topper if you bought all these bulbs. Okay. Well, this was a play, this was a hand blown take on it. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll take a picture and I'll show it to you and I'll, I'll share it with our, our um, listeners. Yeah. So she, she sourced that because she was like, it's blue. It's got uh, silver in it. It's got white. It feels very wintry and Christmas. That was oh, her thing. Nice. I, on the other hand, so you might know this or not know this about me, but I love sharks and I, and it's one of my causes. So I went to a toy store and I bought a plastic shark about five, five inches long. <laughs> I spray painted it gold and then I put little green emeralds in the eye and I put a little Santa hat on top and around its, what would be a neck, let's say yeah. it had like a little uh, bell and then. I put the gold shark on what looks like a Christmas tree yeah. so that it could fit on the top. And that was the one that I presented. So that was our sort of topper competition. How did you ever decide? Did you have any outside, you know, votes or was it just between the two of you? It was between the two of us. Uh -huh. And Amanda said, this shark topper is just so unique and expresses you so well that we have to put a shark on top of the tree because who else would have that? So for that year, we had the shark on top of the tree. Oh, it sounds amazing. As soon as you started yeah. describing it, I was like, of course this, oh, that sounds, that sounds gorgeous. But you're right. There's something so nice about something that's meaningful and, and, yeah. and personal, right? Well, that's why, like, when you talk about these ornaments that you love from Disney, it's mm -hmm. because you have a personal connection to them mm -hmm. uh, or or the Mill Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. Like, these are things that resonate with you. Mm -hmm. What's the oldest ornament you have on your tree? Uh, let me think really quick. Probably the oldest. I think it would be um, – because I'm trying to think when I started getting a tree of my own, which would okay, be – Okay, okay. Right? Because that would really – because, you know, when I was living with roommates and stuff in Toronto. So 2008, I think. So not that long ago. And I okay. think it's a okay. ball that I bought um, because okay. I was walk. I was, remember I was walking through um, First Canadian Place in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And it was a charity, I want to say Covenant House, I think, okay. was, doing like a, was doing a charity thing. And at the time, it was just me and my cat living <laughs> living together. And it was kind of like my our, my first um, Christmas on my own. So I kind of wanted to mark it, I guess, in a special way. Um, so uh, they were doing these beautiful like balls that um, just had like a, a wintry scene on them. But again, they would personalize them with whatever you want. So I just had Leslie and Lily, that's my, the name of my oh, cat, uh, written beautiful. on there with the year. And that would be, I think, I think that makes sense as the oldest thing on my tree. Because I, I would have bought other decorations that year, of course, but I think I was buying more like, you know, you get some of the packages, um, what do they call them? The filler ornaments versus the the personal ornaments or sure, yes. right, collector ornaments. Um, so I definitely had some of those, but I think that that definitely, I think that's the oldest thing on my tree right now. Yeah. I was hoping to hear something like maybe your sister Carmen would have bought you one for your, you know, for Christmas when you were kids, but clearly- you know, you can't rely on Carmen for those kind of you things. Can't rely Is that on safe to say? Absolutely. Well, fair definitely enough. Safe to say. Definitely safe to okay. say. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so, 
You mentioned this earlier, and part of the reason Leslie is on the show today is because both you and I have a love for eggnog. Oh, yes. Oh, Marco. And have we talked about, I mean, your eggnog and coffee? Because I see all the beautiful coffees that you do and make. You must have a a latte situation. So I have a frother, right? And basically you pour milk in and it'll froth it and I make espresso on the stovetop. And so for the holiday season, instead of using milk, I'll put eggnog in there. Sometimes I'll cut the eggnog with milk. Mm -hmm. But if I want a very thick foam, Mm -hmm. eggnog is a perfect vehicle for foam on your coffee. Now, you had eggnog ice cream. And that's how, you know, we got into some Christmas conversation. And I was like, I need to know because I have not found any eggnog ice cream. What was that like? It's delicious. I I haven't had it. I don't think I've ever had it either. And that's the thing. I'm not sure if, you know... If anybody's doing a, if a Canadian brand is doing it, because this one is here in the States, it's Kroger brand, which is like a less expensive kind of just grocery store brand. So I was like, well, let's give this a try. Marco, I am telling you, it's just so smooth. Like it's very noggy, but almost in a subtle way, which I know sounds contradictory, but um, right. But it's like just enough nutmeg, um, enough of a, a cinnamon edge. And it's just, it's so good. So in other words, the nog hasn't taken over the fact that it's ice cream. It's still ice cream with a nice um, sort of handoff to eggnog. Definitely. And with a okay. strong nog finish, for sure. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the things I love about Leslie Seiler is that you know Christmas is approaching because the moment eggnog is available, mm-hmm. you will post it all over your social media saying eggnog is here. Mm-hmm. I bought my first quart of it. Mm-hmm. Everything's right in the world. Absolutely. And also, yes. if I can't find it, I will post, somebody help me. Why can't I find any nog? You know, I'll, I'll say someone else has found some, you know, where's the nog? So I, it's a real hunt for me, which does start around Canadian Thanksgiving because it starts to right. appear in stores. And that's when it's interesting because it'll be some places, but not others. So you've got to search. So when you find it, it can be a big reward. And then and then the season really starts, you know? Leslie, you're an accomplished accomplished baker and chef. And mm-hmm. you. I've seen things that you've made. I've tasted some of the wares that you've made. Mm-hmm. You're exceptional. Have you ever made your own nog? Yes, I did once, but okay. Marco, it was so long ago. It was when I was okay. still living in Nova Scotia. And right. um and I remember making it for a party and it was delicious. It's have you ever made your own nog? You know, it's so funny, Le- Leslie, because um, like you, I did it years and years and yeah. years ago. I feel like back in the day, um eggnog wasn't as prevalent as it is today. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, even 15 15- 20 years ago, eggnog wasn't everywhere. It came and it came around Christmas, but now you can find it almost everywhere. Like we've said, even like Mm -hmm. ice cream and other, other forms. But back then it was like only like in the mid, mid teens of uh, December, did I remember seeing eggnog? So I did it years ago and I remember it being great um, with real eggs and whatnot, but I haven't done it for, for many, many years. Yeah, no, me neither. And I should try it because what I do remember is that it was very light, very yes. different, but like almost refreshing, if that's a word. But I think just comparatively to um, store-bought nog, that can definitely be a lot thicker and more mm-hmm. of that kind of dark yellow. Even this one was very light. It was uh, lighter in color and lighter in sort of texture. And um, they're both great, but, but definitely different. And you know what? I encourage people, if you're interested at all, give it a go. There's lots of great recipes. Yeah. And you're making me think maybe I should do some this week just to just to Listen, if you do, if you do uh, we would love to see photos. So we'll, we'll link us on your Instagram if you do. Um, okay. Do you put a tipple in your eggnog? And if so, do you do brandy or do you do dark rum? Mm-hmm. I'm definitely a rum girl. I love okay. rum, yes. However, and this is a, a oh. hot tip for people in Canada. I don't know, Marco, if you've ever had um, spice box whiskey. Have you ever tried that? No. It's specific. This sounds great. It is. It's specific to Canada. So the brand is called Spice Box. Okay. Um, around Thanksgiving, they'll have a pumpkin spice version. Okay. And around Christmas, they'll do a gingerbread version. But the plain, just regular spice box, just plain, is amazing and it's it's a whiskey that's kind of got like almost like a vanilla-ish 
edge. And that oh, with eggnog that. is also excellent. So for me, it's a toss up between the two of am I having spice box and nog or rum and nog? That would be my debate. Oh, it sounds right up my alley because I like crack and rum because it has that sort of vanilla finish or roundness to it. Yes. And so this sounds delightful. Oh, yes. man. Yes, you have to try it. We we did manage to find some um, here in the States because, again, it's a Canadian product. It's hard to find. There is a place in the Valley that delivers it. It's like a wine oh, wow. import place. So um, right. it wasn't that expensive. So we might have to get okay. one more bottle for uh, for Christmas. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. All right, Leslie, before we end this episode, I need to know oh. a few things, but give us your top holiday tips. Oh, wow. Do you have any tips that you're like, okay, here's something I do in the holidays that really sets things right, or here's a time saver, or here's something, if you don't have, let's say, the funds this year, where you can still have a wonderful holiday, you can still bring some joy and light and festivity to your home or to your meal or with your friends? Yes. I'm going to start with that one because that really resonates for me, especially this year. Um, Sure. Because for many years now, I've been doing something um, with – we've been spending uh, Christmas with some friends because we haven't been able to travel for varieties of reasons. Um, So the past couple of years we've done this, we're going to do it again this year. Um, It's called the Reindeer Games. And it's basically – I create – and I just make them up. So I create a bunch of different events or tasks or games that everybody plays. And then it culminates in a scavenger hunt at the end. Um, and we look now we, everyone look at, looks forward to it every year. And I just did it yesterday online with my own family for the first time. And I called it the first annual Siler reindeer games. Cause I have like nieces and nephews now and things like right. that. And it just dawned on me yesterday as I was like, this is amazing. And such a great way to like, that's a gift that people could be doing for each other now. Like there's, there's all kinds of online games. Like if you, you know, if you have a, a board game like Scategories or Family Feud or something that you like to play, you can create your own Christmas version. There's many versions to purchase online as well, like from Etsy, like people are making these things. Um, but that kind of stuff I feel like is the kind of stuff that um, anybody can do. And I think my, one of my biggest Christmas tips, I, I'm going to, for sure, is the gift of time. So to, yes. to that end, and why I use that as a tip is what I'm saying is as you get into December, try to remember even leading up to Christmas to book, you know, dates with people. And again, even if it's over Zoom or it's going for a drink or having some people over for dinner or, you know, just coming and sitting by the tree, those are the kinds of things that like complete and fill out your season, if that makes sense. So that it's not just waiting up until the one day and then Christmas is over. And, you know, it's like when you plan for a wedding for such a long time and then you're like, oh, it's over. Um, If you really do that kind of stuff and connect with people like all through the month of December up until even New Year's, then I think you're going to feel like, yeah, you've had a fuller season. Does that make sense? Oh, Leslie, it makes total sense. And it reminds, it it's, it truly ex- demonstrates to me how much you love Christmas in that, you know, it's not just about the baubles and the lights and the tinsels and the wrappings. It reminds me of in the uh, Grinch who stole Christmas mm-hmm. when the Grinch stole all their presents, mm-hmm. the people from Whoville still had a Christmas because it was from within. And to me, um, Leslie, a lot of that is is very what you're saying is very lovely and I think is very true. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, I, I really believe that it is. And I think that people can create a lot of joy without having a lot of stuff. Um, and, and again, it's just investing maybe a little bit of time. Um, and especially now where everybody's on zoom now, everybody knows uh, right. mostly how to use, you know, you can jump on there and have a lot of fun, um, trivia nights, um, you know, you know, you can do all kinds of activities with families and friends. And I think that's, I think that's what this season's, you know, a, a good for is, is getting together and celebrating with people in that way and just, yeah, connecting. And you know, Leslie, you don't even need ornaments for a tree. You could write, you could take white paper oh, yeah. and cut them into, into rectangular squares mm-hmm. and write something you love about the person you're spending with mm-hmm. and just fold it and place it on various branches. And then uh, the morning of Christmas, you wake up and you get to read all these little poems or all these little messages. And I take that from my wife who did that for me for my birthday. She oh, put really? all these little poems about me on the Christmas tree before we had it. Uh-huh decorated Mm -hmm. and it was just a green tree with white rectangular pieces of paper all over it and was really really wonderful oh my god that's beautiful yeah yeah 
Yeah. And if if anybody's listening and thinking like, oh, you know, because I know some people are like, oh, you're so creative, Leslie, I could never think of that. I, you know, just take to the internet. That's what it's there for. These ideas, are, like, they're not all my brain childs, you know? So like, right. I encourage people to say like, just, you know, um, yeah, take these ideas or or just if you're thinking of how, what can I do with people, just do a little Google search. There's things out there and activities and and um, I promise you that you'll find something, ways to connect with people. Now, Leslie, you also mentioned charities because yeah. you said one of the ornament. And I think that's another great thing. If you can't donate, perhaps volunteer at a charity mm -hmm. and just share the love that you have for the season and for your fellow human, if you can. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, I agree. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, again, if you can't give, you know, financially, um, even sharing posts about them or, or getting the word out, if they are doing a fundraiser, those kinds of things. Cause I know whenever I do, um, an online, you know, fundraiser, sometimes that's just my ask. I'm like, I understand if you can't give, but share my post, maybe it'll reach somebody who, who can. Um, so that's part of spreading that as well, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Now I can't end this show without asking you, oh, Leslie, okay. I feel like we've covered a lot of Christmas ground, yeah. but your favorite Christmas song or carol or what? Okay. I have got, all right. As you were talking, I was like, what do I love? And I mean, there's so many, it's hard oh. to pick a favorite. Um, I love both of those ones as well. So much, so many okay. memories of like, oh, holy night in, in, you know, mm -hmm. at midnight mass and all of that. But I think oddly enough, I'm going to pick one. Um, I'll be home for Christmas. Okay. Yes. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful song. And I think for me, it also, um, the origin of that song was, I think it was written during the second world war. So it was really about people really, um, acknowledging and wanting to be home and be, be together. And mm -hmm. that continues to like resonate, I think with me, because I've always, I've lived away from my family for, for, you know, right. over half my life now, almost, I think more away from home than home. So that, yeah, that just has a wonderful, warm feeling to me. And it's wow. exciting, you know, when you know you are going to be home for Christmas. Um, and then I'm actually going to go with a, um, what are you doing New Year's Eve for a more, oh. a less traditional? I wow, yeah, I think it's beautiful. I think there's something about, um, like it's kind of romantic, and it's something about like it's after Christmas, but it's this other, um, you know. And I think what does he say? Maybe it's much too early in the year, mm. but you know, I'm just asking, what are you doing anyway? I I, that, I think I think I'm going to stick with those two. I've fallen in love with um, Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas Is You," mm -hmm. and then I love the song, and I don't know the name of it, but the chorus is Fall on Your Knees. You know mm -hmm. that one there? Mm -hmm. That's the other one I love. I can't think of the name of that song. And I always say to Amanda, can you put Fall on Your Knees? And she's like, it's not called that. Yes. And she tells me what it is. I think it's Oh Holy Night. It is. I was just going to say, I'll tell you what it is. Like, oh Holy Night. <laughs> okay. um, Those are my two favorites. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I love it, Leslie. You know, I just don't want this episode to end. So uh, this is this is a double episode for our listeners. Mm -hmm. All right. Two things I need to say. The best Christmas album everyone should have in their collection is Elvis Presley, I Wish Every Day Was Christmas. I was just um, going to say that. I thought you were going to ask me and I was going to agree. I, that's oh, what sorry. I'm so sorry. I love it, Leslie. Sorry. Uh, because of the fact that you can play it on road like on a on a repeat and there's so many songs that by the time you get back to the first one which i think is blue christmas it doesn't you don't get tired of it, at least i don't it's amazing oh the, see now i'm thinking of all the elvis songs i love yes but the, the song if every day was like christmas is yeah. an amazing song oh you picked a good one marco yeah oh, that is good did you say and you had that, one yeah i i just discovered this artist's um Christmas album, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I'm going to give it to you as mm -hmm. a must listen to. Casey Musgraves. Okay. Have you heard of this singer? Now, you know, I'm not very musically. No, smart. She's, she's a country singer who writes okay. her own music, and she wrote a, or she has a Christmas album, and it is fantastic. I, I don't know why I'm late to the party here, but I listened to a song called Glitter mm -hmm. uh, by um, Casey Musgraves, and then she has a song that she does a version of Feliz Navidad, that, which I think is fantastic. She mm -hmm. does a duet with Willie Nelson called A Willie Christmas, I believe. And Leslie, once once we're, we end this conversation, please promise me you will listen to Casey Musgraves' Christmas albums. I will. I'll look her up I've, right away. Fantastic. I'll look her up on Spotify, see if she's there. Yes. Oh. 
Leslie, this was such a delight. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for having me. It's just, yeah, it's, and I want you to know while we've been recording this, I've been like, I have lights all up in my bedroom and Christmas lights around the window and it's been a wonderful, yeah, it's just been really nice. <laughs> I love it. I want to, I want to wish you and PK all the best for your Christmas, for your New Year's. I also want to send a special message to your mom and your dad who are such delightful, lovely people. <laughs> Thank you so much. I also want to send my love to uh, your sister, Kathy, and her family. Mm -hmm. And I even want to send it to uh, Carmen, who, you know, she can be a little bit temperamental. She has her ways. Sometimes Mm -hmm. she can be a Grinch. But Mm -hmm. at the heart of it all, she's a lovely person. And I want to wish her and her family all the best as well. Listen, thank you for that. And I really appreciate that. and, And that is very big of you. For sure. Yes. <laughs> you were going to say something before I cut you off. Sorry. I was, I, I, I was, I, I, what am I doing cutting you off when you're giving all these beautiful wishes? But I was going to say same to you and Amanda. Oh, and thank you. Family. Have a thank wonderful you. Christmas and a great new year. And yeah, all of that good stuff. Till then, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Insomnia Project. And hopefully you were able to listen and relax and maybe even sleep. <laughs>